college football gambling picks week number quattro. Quattro, baby. Week four. We're going to jump into it. First off, Tunica, Mississippi is bringing you this segment, bringing you the show. The South's premier sports gambling destination. You can watch and wager on any of these games at any of Tunica's five, soon to be six incredible sports books Horseshoe, Samstown, Gold Strike, First Jackpot, uh, put, First Jackpot, Hollywood, opening soon, opening Friday. Uh, September 28th at 11 a.m., the Sportsbook at the Fitz. You can go check that thing out. Put your bets down there. You can get more information on all of that over at tunicatravel.com. You can get more information on these picks over at winningcureseverything.com, and you can put your picks in into our picks contest. We've got different prizes every week. This week it is a two-night stay at Hollywood Casino along with a $50 slot play. Not too shabby. Last week was a $100 dining credit at one of the fine steakhouses down there along with a $50 slot play. And we're going to have night stays and all sorts of different stuff. So go check it out, winningcureseverything.com. We've got all sorts of different prizes we are giving away each week. Join in, tell your friends, share it out on Facebook, all that wonderful stuff. Chris. Yes, sir. You want to go first? Game number one. Uh, The way that this works, for anybody that hasn't seen, we've got seven games each. We're doing it just like the William Hill College Pick'em Contest. Seven games against the spread. You got number one. Mark D'Antonio coming off a bye, coming off a pretty bad loss on Pac-12 after dark. He gets to go to the rough, tough stadium of Indiana. <laughs> I don't know that that crowd is very ruckus. Tom Allen, man, like he's... He's laying five points. Didn't Tom Allen... And I think Michigan State is ready to just kick someone's butt. They haven't gotten to play in two weeks after that loss, and I think they got the chapped ass on them, and they're ready to fight. Didn't Tom Allen marry Roseanne at some point? Isn't that, isn't no, that the I same think it's guy? Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold, that's it. Tom Arnold. <laughs> All right, all right. So, what, what's the line you got them at? I got them at five. I got Michigan State minus five. You got them at five. And, and I think they roll. I don't think Indiana is going to be a tough place to go into and play. Okay, okay. Uh, these lines are brought to you by uh, by Gold Strike this week. Uh, we will change that up every week. Uh, the lines will change. So, we're going to give you these lines. We that are we recording got it this on Tuesday evening. Tuesday evening, but the lines will change. So, if you ain't real comfortable with it, hit us up on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, and, and we'll talk you through it. We'll talk you through whether or not, like, if the line moved Michigan State minus seven and a half or something. I, I'm rolling with Dan Tony. There you go. You All you got to do is hit us up. Hit us up. All right. <laughs> Game number one for me, Notre Dame at Wake Forest. I'm taking the Deeks plus eight. It's 11 a.m. Saturday on ABC. You can watch that down to the casinos in Tunica. BB&T Field in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Notre Dame's only spread cover this year was the win over Michigan. Uh, that was a fast start to the game, and Notre Dame has not exactly looked great since. Like in the last 10 quarters, they've just kind of, eh, we'll get through whatever. And they haven't had to like because they're still winning. Wake is going to be fired up for this. They lost a close game at home to Boston College last week. Uh, Notre Dame is only averaging 3.63 yards per run. Wake is 7-4 and four against the spread after a loss since 2016. They are 2-0-2 oh, as a home underdog. Wake had 239 rushing yards last year at Notre Dame and 349 passing yards at Notre Dame in a 48-37 loss. I think Wake matches up really well here. Notre Dame has not been covering lately. Give me Wake Forest plus 8. You ride her till she bucks here or you don't ride at all. I'm going with the fighting mullet down in Oklahoma State. (laughs) Listen, we just went through this. This is almost the exact same game, exact same game plan. High-flying offense, hadn't really played anybody, putting up a lot of points on everyone, scoring 60 a game, coming in, you know, to, uh, to Oklahoma State, and this Oklahoma State team is rougher and tougher than they've ever been that I can remember seeing them. This is one they're, of the same games that I've got. They're playing tough defense. I got a minus thirteen and a half. I think I think Gundy is I think he's tired of playing the stepchild to Oklahoma. And I think he's trying 
to make moves. The, the coaching moves that he made to, to build that staff up, to beef up on defense, I think he knew he had to do. I like Oklahoma State big. I, I, liked I like them last too. week big against Boise, and, and I, this week it's a big number. I don't care. I think this is the same team against against Texas Tech. Yes, uh, 6 p.m. is that game on FS1. T. Boone's picking stadium in uh, in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Uh, look, Ole Miss had their first 200-yard rusher in eight years against Texas Tech. Justice Hill is averaging 8.15 yards per carry, and that's even against Boise. So uh, Oklahoma State, is they're going to score a lot. The thing that has changed this year is Oklahoma State's defense. Exactly. Former Duke defensive coordinator Jim Knowles, he has insanely improved this team. In three games, Oklahoma State already has 16 sacks and 32 tackles for loss. Way more physical they, than they've ever been. They are only giving up 3.98 yards per play. The offense is averaging 7.29. They're going to win this by at least three touchdowns. I think Boise State's offense is better than Texas Tech's. Yeah, I and think so. And they shut them down. I, I think you're probably right. Yeah, they, they shut them way down. Uh, what is your uh, what is your pick number three? Now, I, there's a little bit of feel, a little bit of science, a little bit of magic to this one. I feel so good about it. I love this pick. I like taking a team that came off a really, really tough loss. They're pissed off. They're angry. They're gritty against a team that just puffed themselves up, beating up on somebody, a big national TV game, but I don't know that their opponent was very good. Give me TCU and the Fighting Horn Frog. Give me Gary Patterson. I did something last week that scared me in betting against Ohio State. You don't like laying points against those big teams because they roll you. They didn't roll TCU. TCU's tougher and stronger and better than Texas at every part of the game. They're going to be better coached than Texas. This is at Texas. It does not scare me at all. I'm laying three and a half, and I think Gary Patterson's going to go in there and look for a fight. I think he's going to have them ready. Coming off that loss when they had that game. Wait, they, what, number, what number did you get them at? I got them at three and a half. Three and a half? Gold Stars got them at three. Take the three. Well, I would take the three if it's at three. Yeah, it it says three right there. Take That's the three. Fine. I'm going to put you down for the three. Give me the three. I'm going to put you for the three. No worries. It, it actually opened up, I think, at two and a half. And yeah, then it, it's, it it's went getting, up it's and it's gone back down. It's probably getting better. Well, no, it, it, it went back down again. Okay. Obviously. So that's. That's from today. Okay. That is today. Uh, let me go on and jump in with Kansas State at West Virginia. I'm taking Kansas State plus 16 and a half. The line is actually going to continue to move. Uh, I don't see it. On, let's see if you can find it in there. Yeah. You can uh, here's the deal. Kansas State, Saturday, 2.30 p.m. ESPN. Uh, let me see if I can say this right. Milan Pusher, Pusker Stadium in Morgantown, West Virginia. I was trying to say the right thing. I can't remember. Kansas State is 18-8 and eight against the spread as a road dog since 2010. West Virginia at home is only 19-23 and 23 as a favorite in that same span. Kansas State's overall numbers are skewed a little bit because of their game against Mississippi State. West Virginia did not play last week because of the hurricane. West Virginia coming off of a bye, 3-11 and 11 against the spread under Dana Holgerson. What we got? Fifteen and a half. Oh, we got fifteen and a half now. Okay, so I, all right. So either way, even if it's fifteen and a half, if it's if it's above two touchdowns, I'm rolling Kansas State here. Uh, Bill Snyder will get the Wildcats back here. They they started to look like themselves against UTSA last week. Averaged uh, seven point one three yards per play in a forty one to seventeen win. They're going to score on West Virginia. They're going to score a little bit there, and I think this game ends up being pretty close. I'd say about a ten point. 10-point uh, finish, something like that. Touchdown, whatever. Kansas State, plus uh, 16.5 is what I got it at. Um, and it will probably move back again. We'll figure that out. But, yeah, fight the uh, – take take the, the fight in Bill Snyder's. Hey, that's a good pick. I like, I like Bill. I like Bill a lot. All right, <clears throat> my next pick, nobody in the country was higher on South Carolina than me. Will Muschamp wasn't as excited about <laughs> South Carolina <laughs> – as I was, maybe while they got off to the start that they got off to. Uh, speaking of starts, before you get into that, we didn't even tell everybody. I went three, three, and one last week. That puts me at eleven, nine, and one on the season so far. You went five and two last week. You are ten, ten, and one in college. Uh, our contest winner, which you can join on the website winningcureseverything dot com, contest winner was Michael C from over in Alabama. He went uh, eight and two against the spread. He was the only person that went eight and two. 
uh, which was pretty remarkable considering we had hundreds of people in there. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, go check that thing out. Uh, it, we're, we're doing okay. We're about 500, right over 500. Um, we we changing that this week. Go right ahead. Yeah. Well, I like South Carolina. I liked them so much at the beginning of the season. Now, I was wrong on that, and I didn't really have any feelings about Vanderbilt. And, and I was wrong on that, too, because Vanderbilt's way better than I thought. I know that Vanderbilt crowd is going to be excited because they've – they're looking a lot better. South Carolina doesn't hadn't really impressed. I think Muschamp's going to go in there. I think he's going to steamroll these guys. It's less than a field goal. I got him at two and a half. I like South Carolina to roll big. It, it, it may or maybe they don't steamroll them. It could be a touchdown game, but but I'm I'm not very worried. This is a game that I love. I can uh, I can understand that. So at less than a field goal always feels pretty good against Vanderbilt. Uh, against Vanderbilt, yeah. Uh, especially after Vandy put everything they had That's into that it. Notre Dame game That's last right. year. Uh, NC State, minus 6.5 at Marshall. Uh, wait, what's the latest on that one? See if you can find it. Uh, Saturday at 6 p.m. on CBS Sports Network at Jones C. Edwards Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia. That's right. NC State is going to play at Marshall. Marshall uh, and NC State's games last weekend were both canceled. Since 2013, NC State is 9-2 and two against the spread after a bye. That's, okay, so it is still 6.5. Yeah, NC State, since 2013, when Dave Doran got there, 9-2 and two against the spread after a bye. Uh, as a road favorite under Dave Doran, NC State is 7-2-1 against the spread. Marshall gave up 6.08 yards per play to freaking Miami of Ohio, and they only averaged 5.7 yards per play. My numbers say that NC State is going to win this by three touchdowns. Why it is down to six and a half, I have no idea. I'm rolling with Ryan Finley on this one. Dave Doran, bring me home. We covered this game in the previews a little bit. Tennessee versus Florida. This is, uh, you know, probably not the most talented Tennessee team that we've seen in a while. But it is. <laughs> that is an understatement. <laughs> more superiorly coached than we've seen them in a long, long time. I do agree with that one. I think Florida. It, there's just something not right there. Felipe Franks is what you brought up. I mean, yeah, that's 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 something that's not that's, right. That's part of it. It's he's, not all of he's it. He's not it's part great. Of it. I think this is Pruitt's ability to put his stamp on this program and say we are not going to be pushed around anymore. We're not going to be a stud right now in the SEC East. We're not even close to Georgia. But damn it, we are not beneath Florida. I think this is his kitchen sink game. I think they're throwing everything they got at it. I got UT plus four and a half. I, this game has been a one possession game every year. Yeah, for I, Lord I'm, knows how long. I'm taking. The, I went into this before I even knew the line and just said, I really like Tennessee. If it's close and it's small, and Tennessee's a little favorite, I'll take them. If it's bigger than three points, I'm taking whoever's the dog is. I just, I'm just taking the dog. I and get this the, ended up four I get and a half, the right? home dog, and I think I get the best coach against it. Now, now you got it at what four and a half? You got it at four. It's, and a half. Uh, it's five now. Florida minus five. Man, uh, keep going up. Keep, keep going, going up. up. Keep giving me points. Believe that. All right. So you've got uh, what'd you say? Florida minus five? No, Tennessee plus. Five. I mean, uh, Tennessee plus. I'm sorry. Woo. Tennessee plus five. Don't don't let me write that down wrong. Uh, East Carolina <laughs> plus twenty two. At South Florida, Saturday, 7 p.m., ESPN News at Raymond, J Stadium, Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. Since coming to South Florida, Charlie Strong is 5-8 and eight against the spread as a favorite. He is 3-4 and four as a home favorite. East Carolina is 1-0 and oh against the spread as an underdog this year. Uh, East Carolina was off last week because of the hurricane. The week before that, though, they beat North Carolina 41-19. to 19. They averaged 6.22 yards per play. South Florida is giving up almost six yards per play this season. All of my metrics have this anywhere from an 11-point to a 15-point game. Nothing close to 22. Let's see. What have you got here? 21 20, and a half. 21 and a half. Right, so it's come down a little bit. I still like it there. I still yeah. like it at 21 and a half. Uh, I got it at 22. It may fluctuate, like we told you, but 22, uh, it's, it's where mine is. That's where my bet is. My next pick, there are two teams in all of college football that are far superior to everybody else. And that is Alabama and Georgia. At any point in time, against any opponent not named Alabama or Georgia, and I would probably throw Auburn in there because of the hatred and the rivalry and whatever, 
if they're less than 20 point favorites, you just take them. They're going to Missouri and it's 14 and a half. Yeah. Missouri's not going to keep them within 14 and a half. They're not going to keep them within 21 and a half. They're going to beat them by 30. Kirby Smart is not taking his foot off the gas. And and he's just going to make a point. We should be in the conversation with Alabama. Alabama went to Ole Miss. They beat the hell out of Ole Miss. We got to go to Missouri, and we got to beat the hell out of Missouri. He's going tit for tat with Bama right now. He's playing at a different level. And I can't understand for the life of me why this point spread is not in the 20s. I mean, he moved up half a point. It's 15 now. Okay. But you, you got it at 14 I mean, and, I don't, half, and, and but... Once again, they won't make this line big enough for me to not even feel safe about it. Yeah. They're not moving at five points. I can understand that. I can understand that. I got, I got, I got Georgia minus 14 and a half. Stanford minus two at Oregon. Saturday at 7 p.m. ABC. You may call me crazy. I've, I've called you crazy before. But. I've called you worse, too. This is at Autzen Stadium in, in Eugene, Oregon. Night game, well, afternoon, whatever. It's an evening game. It's a night evening game. game. The public loves betting on Oregon. They love Oregon. But since Mariota left from 2015 on, the Ducks are 15-25-1 against the spread. David Shaw is the single best spread-covering coach in all of college football. Oregon is giving up 226 yards and 7.1 yards per pass attempt through the air. K.J. Costello will 100% take advantage of that. He'll be throwing the jaws. Uh, we've we've already talked about this on one of the other ones, the average staggering rating of the opponents that they have played. Stanford 76, Oregon 171. Stanford rolls into Autzen and finds a win by more than two points. Is it still a two on goal strike? Man, you got to ask the one dyslexic guy to find a number on here. <laughs> Get somebody that can read. I got Stanford minus one and a half. Minus one and a half. It's going down. Going down, brother. I thought I was getting lucky when I got it at minus two. The public right. is on Stanford. What a. No, the public's on Oregon. Not if it's going down, they're not. Gary, that's how gambling works. If it was two and a half and now it's one and a half, that no, means it was, everybody's it betting was two. on Stanford. Now it's, now it's one going down half. to one and a half, which oh, means yeah, everybody's was, betting on okay, Oregon. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Man, I just sounded like a smart ass, and I was dead wrong. Oh, yes, God. you were. That's going to live on that the internet fantastic. forever. Now that I'm going to get a bunch of fat jokes because I was wrong. That was so good. Because apparently my weight is consistent with my brain. There you go. There you go. I'm looking for the updated line because I don't want to sound like another. No, we're good. Dude. On which one? Nope, we're fine. We're good. It hadn't changed. All right. My last pick. Okay. It is not wise to bet against the big boy teams. I have said this I know where time and time again. And sometimes I just do things that are a little foolish. It worked out for me last week. Both betting against both big boys covered. One was in the game, live dog to win it. Texas A&M going to Alabama. Alabama was just a 21-point favorite against Ole Miss. All and then of a sudden, won by 55. Now, all of a sudden, yeah, okay. <laughs> all of a sudden, now they're a 27 point favorite, at, and I know they're at home. Well, it opened to 24. This. It's just the public has bet so much. We're, Jimbo Fisher is going to have these guys ready to play. The only thing that could jack this game up and they don't cover is that crowd gets into A and M's offense's head. But I think A and M's offense is good enough to score. On Bama. Now, I could be wrong. Thought Ole Miss's offense would score a little bit. They didn't. <laughs> but but once again, A and M is not in the class with with Ole Miss. Now, don't get me wrong. I I I do not it's, believe it's different tiers right now. Yes, I I do not believe in any way, shape, form, or fashion that A and M is a live dog chance to win this thing. But you're but they, talking about twenty seven points, almost twenty eight points. Yeah, I'm with you. I just don't see I don't see A and M getting outscored that much. I, I just don't. They have turned the ball over zero. They are Jimbo has them playing really it, well. Really well, but not like reckless. I, like they've been explosive, but usually explosive offenses come with a lot with of risk. Turnovers and risk and, 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 and recklessness. 
like he's found this weird combination of I've got a quarterback that can make big plays and not turn the ball over. Now, also, once again, don't get me wrong, I I, I think he's going to turn the ball over. Yeah, I, that's I, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying he's going to have no turnover. If he has no turnovers in this game, it won't be close to a 27-point spread. They're going to win by two touchdowns pretty safely, but that might be it. Okay, He's going to turn the ball over. They're going to make some mistakes because that crowd's going to get behind them. I don't think that crowd's going to make Bama play one ounce better than they've already played. I think they're playing at maximum efficiency right now. That's not a knock on Bama. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. Yes. And I just think this is way too many points. You might be right. I was expecting this to be a 19-point line because I thought Ole Miss was 21. A&M's a lot better than Ole Miss. A lot better than Ole Miss. A&M would probably be a 14-point favorite against Ole Miss. And all of a sudden, this is a touchdown more than the Ole Miss line? No, yeah. no, no, this is just wrong. I think the the way that Alabama has beaten everybody. But these teams are awful that they've played. I, I know. That's I know. not a knock on Bama. I'm, I'm not but those saying. those teams are terrible. I understand where you're coming from. I'm just saying the way that they have beaten teams, the public. That's better's perception. Yes. I want to be on the other side of that. You give me A&M, you give me A&M all day heavy. Wisconsin and Iowa is my last pick. I can't believe you're touching this game. You better believe I'm oh. touching this game. Look. Saturday, 7.30 p.m., Fox, Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa. I'm taking Iowa plus three and a half. It's it's the same on there. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Iowa is 3-0 and against the spread this year. They're only giving up eight points per game. Wisconsin is 0-3 against the spread, giving up 13.7 points per game. Jonathan Taylor is averaging eight yards per play, but Iowa is – or sorry, eight yards per carry. Iowa is only giving up 1.54 yards per run. I think Iowa has been waiting on this one. I think they are going to shut down Jonathan Taylor. I think that they, honestly, Iowa has shown nothing on offense. They haven't had to. That's exactly what I'm saying. I think that they have been saving up everything for this game. I don't think it matters to Iowa that Wisconsin lost last week. I I don't think any of that stuff matters. I think that Iowa has been waiting to, to rub freaking Wisconsin's face in this one. They are getting them back home. I don't think it's going to be what the Ohio State game was last year, but you saw that Iowa has the capability to do that. I think Wisconsin is a lot worse than we thought they were. They have not looked good in any of the three games that they have played so far this year. I'll agree with that. Iowa and their defense. But they haven't played anybody yet. They haven't, but... I'm if, telling if you. If you think this defense is going to hold Iowa or Wisconsin to under 100 yards rushing, you're just wrong. There's, just, there's nobody in the country that do that. There's just nobody in the country that's going to do that. They're the best rushing team in football. I think they could keep them to, to under 100. I, I think they could. There is That's good. Good luck to you. I'm staying away from it. I'm going to watch this game and enjoy it. There's no way I'm betting against Wisconsin coming off of a bad loss like that. This will be the best week of practice they have had in years. I'm touching it. I don't I don't like I got against it. teams like that. Good We've luck. given you all the information you need to be a winner. Head over to Tunica, get some action down on your favorite plays at any of their five soon to be six sports books. As always, you can visit tunicatravel.com for more information. You can also check out winningcureseverything.com and the free football picks contest. Enter your email. Enter your picks in, win some prizes. Let's move to the NFL. 